Is it on? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> All right, so I had the bright idea to shoot this one in my living room because it is the holidays and I'm kind of doing a little special holiday thing where I'm going to do a feeding video today. Um, I don't do a lot of them. Feeding takes so much time that I often don't have the patience to tape them. But we got super worms this week and we're feeding them super worms and noticing the responses were a little funnier, more comical than normal when I used the roaches or the dubia or the lats. So we figured we'd tape some of them. And hopefully folks will stay tuned to the end of it because we got some really good footage of our emperor scorpions eating. We got up really close and nasty. We could see those little crunchers coming out. And I don't know the technical term. Hopefully somebody will chime in with that. I'm tired. It's the day after Christmas. It's been a long one. So hopefully everybody had a great holiday. Um, and, you know, looking forward to a great new year. And we hope you guys stay tuned to the end of this. As my dog bumps into the tripod because there's dogs everywhere here and enjoys one of my few feeding videos. Again, as I said before, I have nothing against feeding videos. I watch feeding videos. I just don't make a lot of them. So here we go. All right, first up, we got my Brachypelma albopelosum or curly hair tarantula. This one I got from Jamie's a couple of years ago as a sexed young adult, and she's quite the little sweetheart. As you can see here, we just started using super worms or Mario worms for the first time. And if you don't crush their heads, they will immediately try to dig. Unfortunately for this one, um, she's onto it. So she digs it out, grabs it, wrestles that out, and there she goes. She's got them. This one, although fairly docile, she's a little bit skittish. She is an amazing eater. And that's one thing I've noticed with my bee elbows is they always take down prey viciously. They're always in the mood to eat, and I've yet to have any of these guys fast. If I were somebody that handled my tarantulas, which I normally don't, this would be one I'd consider sticking my hand in there with. She's usually pretty laid back. When startled, she can boogie, though, and that's something to keep in mind. When handling tarantulas, that even the slowest species can really move if startled. And next up, we have one of my Formictopus cancerides. I have four of these. Ooh, beautiful takedown there. Um, unfortunately, the other ones are heavy in pre-molt right now. I was having fun feeding the superworms out. I've used those years ago, uh, several years in the past, when I ran out of feeders and I went to Petco and they had some there and I grabbed them. But I haven't used them recently. It's been kind of fun watching these guys try to wrangle them. They kind of move around and wiggle on them, and I think it throws the tarantulas off just a bit. Now, normally when I feed my cancerides, I toss in three or four crickets at a time or a big dubia. So I'm going to go ahead and toss in another mealworm here. And let's see if she's going to get it. And of course, she's not. And it's starting. You can see there that they will dig if you don't crush the heads. So one thing I've noticed is that the mealworms, when you crush their heads, will kind of wiggle a little bit. These guys tend to die pretty quickly. And it's funny when tossing in no prey because I've noticed that sometimes they don't know quite what to make of them when you feed them something new. I've seen it with the roaches when you go from crickets to roaches. Now you can see here with the Super Mario worms, they're a little hesitant to grab them up, but once they figure out they're edible, they grab them up quickly. And you notice this concert is here. They have the reputation for just being brown. You can see this one's more of a beautiful bronze with almost some purplish tones on the carapace. So again, more evidence that they're not just big brown spiders. They really go through some beautiful color changes as they march toward maturity. Next up, I have one of my female Tarina Pelma Sazames. These guys are absolutely voracious eaters, and I must say they're some of the most skittish tarantulas I keep. As slings, they had no problem standing their ground and throwing up threat postures. Now what I usually get is if I startle them, they'll bolt around their enclosure, stop, throw up a threat posture, bend over backwards, sometimes flip all the way over, then start running again. So very unpredictable. So something to keep in mind because I know that uh, beginners are very attracted to the blue tarantulas. And unfortunately, this one's probably getting close to pre-molt here. So you're not seeing as much of the brilliant blues as you normally might. But although the blues are pretty, some of the blue species can be pretty nasty. And these guys, I wouldn't say are nasty, but they are very skittish and defensive. So something to keep in mind. They're also fairly quick. 
So this isn't a tarantula I would stick my hand in and try to handle, and I know a lot of beginners are into handling, so something to keep in mind if you're checking these guys out. Here we got one of my C. Cayenio pubescens, or the GBB, and you can see the gorgeous colors showing up. I was really glad to get the colors to show up in this one. This is actually going to be part of a GBB husbandry video, but I couldn't resist putting it in with the feeding video because, well, it's a GBB feeding, and I don't always get footage of that, and they are voracious hunters and eaters, so I was kind of glad to grab, uh, get an image of her grabbing that uh, meal warm up, I mean a super warm up. You can see the beautiful green carapace, the blue legs, and the orange abdomen just really, they, they pop so much. I will say that when they get close to Primo, the colors are a little more muted and closer to black unless you get a light on them, so something to keep in mind. But this is without any alteration of the color whatsoever. This is just the camera with the light on. Here's my Cerakopelma species, Santa Catalina. I love this thing. It's one of my um, rarer tarantulas as far as things you just don't see offered very much. I got this one from Tom Patterson a couple of years ago as an unsexed juvenile, and I was elated to discover that she was a girl. I was able to sex her out through a molt, but just very cool species, and the colors are finally coming out in this one. A lot of times when I post pictures, it comes out as kind of brown but what you don't see is the almost orangey maroonish tones to them plus those black femurs make it very very striking i've heard these guys can put on some really decent size supposedly seven inches or so hopefully somebody that kept them before can confirm that even if this one stayed as she is right now about five and a half inches still a big beautiful spider As a juvenile, this one actually burrowed quite a bit and didn't come out very much. I'd catch her out when I at feeding time, but she'd bolt right to her burrow. She is staying out in the open much more now. She will be getting a new enclosure very soon because, as you can see, this one's a little bit small. I've got one set aside for her, and I will give her a hide and a little bit of depth, so if she wants to create a nice little den, she can. Overall, just a gorgeous species and one of my favorites in my collection. Here are one of my Pamphibedius species, Aranio polito, or the chicken spiders. I was obviously elated to get a hold of two females, and there's a nice grab. I didn't know if we were going to get one from her. One thing I'm noticing about the male worms is i got to clean these things off a little bit more because I dropped in some, you can see there, some grain that could obviously attract mites and mold and stuff, so i got to get that out of there. New feeder insect, though. Haven't used these very much in the past. Again, the last time I got them, I got them from Petco years ago in one of those little plastic bins, and I fed a couple of them out. That was about it. I don't normally use these, but I'm kind of liking them. It's a nice little alternative to what I usually use. And Billy and I, in the original audio track of this one, were kind of laughing the entire time at watching them try to grab up two worms because they're a little bit different than the roaches or the crickets. They're kind of a solid mass that they can snatch up. These guys are having some problems with, and it was kind of comical. So unlike the crickets and roaches, I can sometimes load them up with two or three or four. In the case of the crickets, these guys, it seems to be two's the limit. They're having a really tough time grabbing up more than that. And you can see how leggy this species is. Just very, very lith as far as the appendage is there with that nice bright red booty. Can't wait for these guys to mature. Here's my larger female Harpactera pulchropes, one of my favorite species, probably top three. I just love the looks of them. This girl's temperament is fantastic. She's gorgeous. She eats well. You can see how fat her abdomen is, honestly. And I'll admit this, that after dropping that big mealworm in, I hadn't noticed how big her abdomen was. I probably should have dropped in something a little smaller because she's looking quite distended there, quite big. Hopefully this will be it for her. I probably will not feed her again after this and wait for her to go through pre-molt and molt. And you can see the colors are a little more dull than they normally on, are here, and that's because it's been a while since she's had a good molt. So you can see the legs aren't popping as much, the blue, that is, and the gold is a little more muted, but still just one of the most beautiful species of tarantulas I think that are available. And she'll also be getting a new cage soon. I may have a male coming, though, and I don't like upsetting the females and doing a cage switch before a male comes, so we'll see how that works out. If the male falls through, she'll be getting a new cage immediately.
And here we got one of my Formictopus species green femur. Notice there are no green femurs yet. This one's yet to molt. One of the other members of the same group here, I have three that are all siblings, just molted. It's got the green femurs now. This one doesn't have them yet, but you see vicious, vicious eaters. I love watching the Formictopus eat, and they're really doing a number on those worms. Yuck. I had to go through afterwards with the spoon and scrape out some of the oatmeal and stuff that was in there. Again, should have thought a little more carefully about this and clean them off before I started feeding them. Live and learn. Here's my female Brachypelma Voggins who was just featured. Great grab there. In my Voggins husbandry video, absolutely loving the look of this girl. And you can see here that red in the abdomen is popping even more, especially against those velvety black legs. Just a gorgeous species. Very, very underrated. A couple people came on the comments of the husbandry video I did and mentioned that they are very underrated as a Brachypelma species or just a beginner species in general, and I have to agree. They're just gorgeous. The one issue with them is the temperament can be rather um, unpredictable and inconsistent between specimens. A lot of people have already come on my other video and mentioned the fact that theirs will toss up threat poses, kick hairs, bolt, so something to keep in mind, but at least um, it is a new world species. It grows very well, it eats well, and if you're not looking to handle, it's definitely something that a new keeper could manage. Up next, we have one of my Formictopus species full greens. Now, as you can see, doesn't know quite what to do with the, the not mealworm, the Mario worm here. Love that awkward position it's in. Again, it's I, I encourage people to try different prey out with their tarantulas because they get used to one thing. So, for example, if you're feeding them crickets a lot, sometimes you drop a roach in and they won't know what to do with it. I've had them literally tiptoe over roaches and not touch them because they're not sure what to make of them. In this case here, you can see they're a little hesitant at first to grab the worm, but as it starts moving around and wiggling, it grabs it up no problem. And that's pretty much what the rest of them did as well. But I did find it kind of comical to watch them wrestle with something new and kind of do these exploratory touches with their feet to try to figure out what they're dealing with. And again, although this is from Ictopus species full green, you can see right now it's sporting almost purple tones. I am expecting those to start transitioning to the greens, probably a more black femur look during the next molt, but we'll see how that goes. And here's another one of the Formictibus species full greens. That was my fault, dropped it a little too close, startled it, but you'll see with Formictibus, they reset rather quickly, and grabs it right up. And I will say after this little Mario worm experiment, I'll definitely be picking these up again. We actually ran into a situation where I needed to get some crickets and I've had issues with the crickets being shipped in the cold, so I decided to order Mario worms instead, but like an idiot, forgetting that they're not mealworms, they can't be refrigerated, so that kind of backfired. So when we got the box in, the box got lost in the mail a couple days, and unfortunately we lost some of them, but the majority of them were in good shape, so we're feeding them out now. If it had been crickets, I honestly think the crickets would have been all dead, so we, we made a good call on that one. And have Grandma Stola Pokerpees, or the Choco Goldeny. I just love that common name. And you can see them kind of wrestling with the worms here. This is a confirmed male. I have a, another one that I believe is a male, and I have another confirmed female. And then I have a small sling that's now, I've just seen it for the first time in about seven months. It popped out, and it's about an inch to three quarters of an inch. Probably closer, I mean, a half an inch to three quarters of an inch. Still a little tiny one. These guys take forever to grow if you get them as tiny slings, but they're tough as nails. Every time I raise the tiny slings up, they start off like a quarter inch. I'm convinced they're dead, and then they pop out again in like April and start eating again. So really tough, interesting species, but you're going to be waiting a while for an adult. Here we have one of my Sicarius tomasoides, or the six-eyed sand spiders love watching these guys hunt. These have become some of my favorite animals in my collection. They're just really, really cool to watch. And you can see how quickly the venom works on this cricket. I've had tarantula seeding crickets minutes later and they're still kicking. And these guys go down quick. I apologize for the quality of the video here. This is before I figured out the settings on my new camera. And so it's a little dark and it looks like a little pixelated, but you can get the gist of it. And unfortunately, the close-ups are not as pretty as they are in the other shots, but 
there it is, taking a cricket down that's uh, actually bigger in body length than it is. And you can see it's taken down pretty quickly. Hopefully next time now that i got the cameras going, I can get some better footage of these guys because they really are fantastically fun to watch eat. And here's, i got the light on so you can see a little bit better. I will say that the other one is blending in much more. It has more of a whitish appearance. Supposedly they can pick up the dust particles from the sand and add them to their exoskeleton so they can blend in more and camouflage. And here's my pair of Emperor Scorpions or Pandanus Imperators. Um, as you'll see in a moment, my female is hiding under this piece, piece of cork bark here and I'm able to entice her out with the worm, so you should grab it. I love feeding the scorpions. Uh, I don't usually use the tongs for my tarantulas because I've had them scrape their fangs on them. I don't want them to injure themselves by grabbing the hard tongs instead of the animals. Plus the fact some of my species could shoot right up the tongs. However, with the scorpions, I can kind of feed them by hand and some of them will come up and just gently take the mealworms or the crickets or the roaches right out of the tongs, which I really enjoy doing. So this is my female and she's over there eating that thing. As Billy commented during the video, it looks like a cigar hanging out of her mouth. And what we're going to do here is feed the male. Now, when I feed the male, he's a little more tentative with taking the food, but I have this thing I do where I take the worm and I just insert it into his claws. You'll see here. And he just grabs them and starts eating. I love that. You don't get, I really can't get that interaction sometimes with my tarantulas. Now you can see here him eating it. And we actually get a really good close up here that I was incredibly excited to get. We're going to zoom up in a minute, but you can see his little mouth parts coming out and cutting into the Mario worm and chewing it up. Just, it's honestly should be disgusting. And I used to have this thing about squishing bugs and bug guts and kind of went with my fear of spiders and bugs. But I found this just fascinating to watch. It almost looks like the alien mouthpieces of the xenomorphs in the alien franchise. There they come. So again, I think it's probably Two parts fascinating to one part kind of disgusting, especially as the guts all start coming out, but I won't be eating anytime soon, thankfully, because it's kind of gnarly, but you can see those mouth parts coming out, just amazing. And I've got these two together now, hoping to get them breeding. Temperature should be right. They've got some space to move around. They've been getting along okay, so with any luck, we'll keep fattening her up and... Uh, She'll be gravid soon enough. The female, not the male right here, obviously. If he gets gravid, something went really wrong. <laughs> Hopefully everybody stayed tuned to the end because we're really kind of proud that we caught that last footage of the scorpions. I finally figured out how to use my new camera so I can get some better footage. And we just watched as my TV, it looked pretty good. So hopefully it looks good on your phone or screens or whatever you're watching on as Kale backs up in the corner. So thanks again for those of you who are just watching me for the first time. Feel free to check out some of my other videos. I usually put them around in here. Or if you liked it enough that you want to subscribe to my channel, I think I will put the little circle thing right up there. Now, for the rest of you all, thanks so much for watching throughout the year. I really appreciate it, and thanks to all of you that comment, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. As dogs break stuff in the back.